This is the UK DEFCON warning system. This emergency update reports the current radiological threat from the Fukushima nuclear power plant. There is no current threat of radiation contaminants reaching any wide areas around the world such as the United Kingdom, except for the local area around the power plant. Radiation levels are still rising and it is recommend you keep tuned to local radio stations and authorities for immediate updates. Current radiation levels around the Fukushima and Okuma areas at 9.36 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, March 13, 2011 stands at an unknown level, however radiation levels are feared to be increasing. I repeat, current radiation levels around the Fukushima and Okuma areas at 9.36 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, March 13, 2011 stands at an unknown level, however radiation levels are feared to be increasing. On to the report. Technicians are battling to stabilize a third reactor at a quake-stricken Japanese nuclear plant, which has been rocked by a second blast in three days. The fuel rods inside Reactor 2 at the Fukushima Daiichi plant have been fully exposed on two separate occasions, raising fears of a meltdown. Seawater is being pumped into Reactor to try to stop the rods overheating. A cooling system breakdown preceded explosions at the plant's Reactor 3 on Monday and Reactor 1 on Saturday. The latest hydrogen blast injured 11 people, one of them seriously. It was felt 40 kilometers, 25 miles, away and sent a huge column of smoke into the air. The outer building around the reactor was largely destroyed. But as with the first explosion, Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO, said the thick containment walls shielding the reactor cores remained intact. It also said radiation levels outside were still within legal limits. Shortly after the blast, TEPCO warned that it had lost the ability to cool Fukushima Daiichi's reactor too. Hours later, the company revealed that the fuel rods inside had been exposed fully at one point, reportedly for about two and a half hours. It said the fire pump that had been used to pump seawater into the reactor had run out of fuel. The company is now trying to inject seawater into the reactor to cover the fuel rods, cool them down and prevent another explosion. Initially. Water levels continued to fall despite the efforts, as only one of the five fire pumps was working, officials said. The other four were believed to have been damaged by the blast at Reactor 3. By Monday evening, the water level inside the reactor had risen to 2 meters, but later, TEPCO officials said the fuel rods had again been fully exposed. Air pressure inside Reactor 2 rose suddenly when the airflow gauge was accidentally turned off. That blocked the flow of water into the reactor leading to the water level dropping and the rods being exposed at about 2,300 local time, 1,400 GMT. We are not optimistic but I think we can inject water once we can reopen the valve and lower the air pressure, a TEPCO official told reporters. Exposure for too long a period of time can damage the fuel rods and raise the risk of overheating and possible meltdown. Japan's Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency said workers were also battling rising pressure within the reactor. They have opened vents in the containment vessel, which could release small amounts of radiation. Chief Cabinet Secretary Dukio Adano earlier said the emergency effort to cool Reactor 2 would hopefully stabilize the situation, and that radiation around the plant remained at tolerable levels despite the various crises. Nevertheless, Nearly 185,000 people have been evacuated from a 20 kilometers, 12 mile, exclusion zone around the plant. The U.S. said it had moved one of its aircraft carriers from the area after detecting low-level radiation 160 kilometers, 100 miles, offshore. Experts say a disaster on the scale of Chernobyl in the 1980s is highly unlikely because the reactors are built to a higher standard and have much more rigorous safety measures. Earlier. TEPCO said it had restored the cooling systems at two of the three reactors experiencing problems at the nearby Fukushima Daini power plant, 11.5 kilometers, 7.1 miles, to the south. The Japanese government has asked the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, to send a team of experts to help, the UN agency's chief has said. Remember, we are not the officials so please do not follow our actions. We are just here to give current affairs and we use our own system to evaluate current actions across the world. For this special report, we will update you as soon as possible if there are any changes in the nature of the malfunctions of the power plant reactors. 
Updates in radiation levels will also be reported if necessary. Remember to remain calm and follow instructions by the local authorities. Please comment and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for your time.